What is going on, guys? Welcome back. We'll be doing our fourth team in the AL East today, the Tampa Bay Rays, a team that always seems to trade away good players when they're about to hit for agency, but still find a way to compete. And I respect it. They always seem like they get the most out of their players. There's sometimes players you haven't even heard of that come up in the minor leagues or in a trade with the uh, Rays, and they just make a immediate impact. And it just goes to show they have very good player development. They get the most out of their players, and that's great to see. So let's see. We're going to be working with Shane McClanahan. Going to be the ace. We got him signed for two more seasons. So the question is, are we going to be able to keep him in free agency? We'll have to see. Zach Eflin, one of the rare free agent signings. $13.3 million is a lot of money to spend for the Rays. Really been pretty good throughout his career. Very reliable starter. Drew Rasmussen, another guy who's a starter currently injured, but he won't be injured during this franchise. Got him from the Milwaukee Brewers. Very reliable pitcher. Zach Littell they got from the Giants. And then you got Aaron Savali, who they got from the Guardians. So that's our one through five in the rotation. But we also got some depth. We got Jeffrey Springs, who could be an option to be either a long relief pitcher or a bullpen option. And you got Ryan Papiet. Pepiet, Pepiet, let me know if I'm mispronouncing that. Another young star they got, only 26, could be an option as well. And they got Tyler Alexander, Shane Boz, Taj Bradley, who they're very high on as well. So Taj Bradley's really our only big name pitching prospect. And then the bullpen, you know, you got Jason Adam, who's been very reliable for the last two seasons, Kevin Kelly, Garrett Cle Clevenger. Colin Poche, and then Sean Armstrong and Phil Maton, who I thought the Cardinals were going to end up getting, but they ended up signing, uh, I can't even think of his name right now. I followed it. Middleton, Kenyon Middleton. I think I'm pronouncing that right. So you look at this team, and there's a lot to work with. You got Pete Fairbanks as the closer, not the highest overall in the world, but 82 overall. So maybe we upgrade closer through a trade or something. Then we got Neil Ramsey, who I signed in free agency before I started this. And he could be an option as well. And then Luis Jarez, who I also signed in free. He's both only 25, so both could be contributors maybe. If our bullpen's struggling, they might be contributors right away because our bullpen's not very good. Catcher, you got Ben Rortbet, who was on the Yankees. Again, my bad for, uh, if I'm pronouncing some of these names. Didn't really contribute much to the major league level so far. Yankees expected better. Just hasn't really been able to hit. Good, good defensive catcher, though. So catcher might be something we need to... Upgrade. We don't really have any catching prospects that are really going to come up and make an impact. Yandy Diaz, first baseman, 32. We got him signed for the rest of this franchise, but maybe we look to move him if Xavier Isaac develops quickly. If we find another first baseman through trade, second base, we got Brandon Lau, another guy who has big power. So that's good to have from the left handed side. He's going to be another guy signed for the rest of the front on a very team friendly deal. And then Ahmed Rosario, who they got, I think, a trade with the Guardians as well. A guy who hasn't hit for much power, but... Oh, yeah, I think they signed him in free agency. I think he was a free... Yeah, he went to the Dodgers from the Guardians in the trade. So my bet on that. Guardians to the Dodgers, and he went to be a free agent. And then he signed with the Rays for $1.5 million. So he'll be a guy off the bench. Third base, Isaac Paredes has turned into a star for them. 20 home runs in 2022. 31 home runs in 2023. Really just a reliable power bat in the lineup. Other than that, though, not much depth at third base, really. We might need to look at that. And then shortstop, you got Jose Caballero, Taylor Wells, who, or Taylor Wells, Taylor Walls, who switch hitters. I don't think they really, I don't think he's really turned out to be the player they really hoped he would be. I remember a few years ago, he was like a top prospect. Just hasn't really hit like they thought he would. Good defender, though. And then they got two shortstop prospects, Junior Caminero and Carson Williams. So that could be two young players we either trade to get someone better or maybe they make an impact in these next three seasons. We'll see. And then left field, Randy Rosarena, who's really struggled this season but really been a very good trade for them when they got him from my Cardinals. The Rays always seem to win every trade they do. Richie Palacio, another guy they got from my Cardinals, which... Listen, Andrew, for Rays fans, if you're wondering, Andrew Kittridge has been amazing for us. I think that trade was even for both sides. But Lacios, I've heard, has been doing pretty good for the Rays. So it's good to see a trade work out between two teams. Jose Siri in center field. Guy who's got a little bit of pop. Very good outfielder and defender in center field. And you got Josh Lau. I know one of them is Lowe and one of them is Lau. I think Brandon Lau and Josh Lowe. I think. I, I, I apologize if I ain't doing or pronouncing that right. But Josh Lowe, 20 home runs last year. Another guy who's got a little bit of pop. 
So the Rays got some pieces. Are they a World Series team when you look at this roster? No. But I think we can make a wild card or maybe make some noise. We'll just have to see. So I'm going to get this franchise underway. Hopefully we can make some noise with the Tampa Bay Rays. The first season might be a fill-out process. We'll see where we're sitting at the trade deadline, see if we can make any moves. With this Rays team, I'm really going to try to be realistic. They don't sign a ton of free agents. Obviously, I'll sign a few. But obviously, I'm not going to sign like a Juan Soto or a Corbin Burns or somebody like that. That's just not in the Rays formula of how they run things. I try to keep a little bit more realistic. Like the Yankees and Red Sox, I spent a little bit of money. The Orioles, I spent a little bit of money. But the Rays, I'm going to try to win without spending a ton of cash. So we'll see how this first season goes. I'll see you guys at the trade deadline. Trade offer from the Mets. A trade that's really even for both sides, I think. We're going to get Jorge Lopez, who's having a really good season. He's a free agent after the year, but not really going to probably want a ton of money. 1.91 1.91 ERA for Sean Armstrong, who has a 2.16 ERA. Both very good. I think this is a good trade. And, you know, I was thinking, who's somebody who ain't making a ton of money? I was looking at Hung Sung Kim. He's not having a great season, but maybe a change of scenery would do him justice here. He's only making $7 million a year, and he's not due for free agency until after we're done with this franchise anyways. So I thought, you know what, let's try to get him. I was going to consider giving up Junior Caminero, but he's... He's obviously struggling at the major league level right now, but maybe we could use them for a bigger trade. And we're going to give up Jose Caballero, who's not having a great season. I mean, he's definitely tradable with the shortstop, you know, depth we got. And then we're going to trade some of our starting pitching depth and trade them Shane Boz. And he's having a really good year in double A. Not a really good year, but a solid year in double A. I feel like it gives the Padres some pitching, really good pitching prospect for a shortstop. So another trade got offered to us, Zach Littell, who is not having a bad year at all. But we have a lot of starting pitching depth, and we need to upgrade this bullpen. The Athletics are offering us Austin Adams having a really good season out of the pen. He's 32. We got him signed for another season after this to arbitration. And we also got, you know, Jeffrey Springs. He's having an okay year. Not batted by any means. And then we got Ryan Pepiot and Triple A having a really good season, 2.42 early. So we can call him up, put him in the rotation, and add to our bullpen. Here we are, year one, trade deadline. We're sending a 57-50, to 50, so not a terrible season. We're four games back, so we definitely can make a run and get in first place. We're behind the Orioles and the Red Sox. And, you know, we've been getting a lot of trade offers for Randy Rose or Randy. I was really debating on whether to trade him or not. But his value is a lot lower right now because he's not having a really good season. Let's see how everybody's been doing. I'm at Rosario having a solid campaign. I mean, he's probably going to have a better year than last year. Yandy Diaz. Not much power so far this year, but hitting 282, so that's good to see. Isaac Paredes, power a little down as well from him, but for, hopefully he can bounce back in the second half. 14 home runs, he'll finish at least 20. Josh Lau, having a really good season, probably going to have a year identical to last year. Brandon Lau, or Low, 11 home runs, 37 overs. Just not much power from our team so far. Randy Rosa Rainey having a really down year so far. Hung Sung Kim has not hit so far for us. I mean, hopefully he can get the bat going. Ben, not great out of the catcher spot, but he's not known for his offense. And then Jose Siri not hitting for much power average. So just not a lot of power in this lineup. Herod Ramirez has been okay off the bench. Richie Palacios is having a really good season for us. Six home runs, 21 RBIs, 308 average. And then Junior Caminero, still getting that major league experience. Not much to be excited about yet. And then Rene Pinto. Two home runs, I mean, not bad for a backup catcher. So the lineup definitely looks like a concern. Shane McClanahan, not the year we expected from him. 4-12 and 12 record, 3.71 ERA. So hopefully he can get it together going into the last, last two months. Drew Rasmussen, not having a great year either. 4.52 ERA. Zach Eflin's having a solid year. 2.69 ERA, 10-6 and six record. Aaron Savali's been great, 2.99 ERA, 9 and 5 record. And then Ryan Pepiot, we caught him up in the minor leagues, and he's been good in one start so far. And then Jeffrey Springs out of the bullpen is giving us innings. ERA under 5, I'll take that. Phil Maton's having a good year as well, that's great to see. Kevin Kelly's been excellent out of the bullpen, 2.32 ERA. Colin Pache's been great, 3.16 ERA. Jorge Lopez has been a great trade acquisition, ERA's solid. Austin Adams, another trade acquisition we got, 3.24 ERA. And then Jason Adams, not 
unbelievable numbers, but still solid out of the pen. Definitely having a down year compared to last year, though. And then Peter Fairbanks, 29 saves, only blew two saves so far, and a 2.20 earned run average. So our bullpen looks great. I mean, the bullpen don't really have much to be concerned about. The rotation, three guys having good years, Eflin, Savali, and Pepiot. But Rasmus and McClanahan got to turn around if we're going to have any success in the second half. Let's see if there's anybody. I put a lot of guys on the trade block just to see what we get offered because the Rays are always doing trades and stuff. So I was just curious what we'd actually get offered in the trade. Like Matt McClain, is that somebody we go after? This is up the Rays alley, you know what I'm saying? Like a guy who's not due for free agency for a long, long time. We need offense. He's not really hitting for much power either. I got him, I think, in another franchise mode. Can't really remember. I think it was the Mets I got him for. And he just didn't really hit. Maybe we get him and he turns it around. Let's see what they want for him. Let's see. Aaron Savali and Josh Lau. Taylor Walls and Josh Lau. So we got Kim a shortstop, but Matt McClain can play anywhere. Let's see if they want Randy Rosarania. He's not having a great year. Maybe we throw him in the trade. And how about how about we trade them Caminero? I know he's our top shortstop prospect, but he's not going to play a lot behind Kim. We still got Carson Williams. And let's see, where we have a surplus, we have a surplus second baseman. Maybe we play in or play throwing Hunter Haas, twenty-two. I think this is a pretty fair trade. I mean, they're getting Randy Rosarania, a left fielder. I mean, they got a lot of outfield, but they could put him in right field or DH, and they get a top shortstop prospect who they could have either play everywhere or maybe play third base or second base eventually, and they get a second base, you know, minor league player. I'm going to do this trade. So we get Matt McClain to add to our team. So going to be the final trade I make before we send the second half. Going to trade Jeffrey Springs to the Dodgers for Tony Gosselin, who could be a long relief pitcher for us, maybe even a starter. Look at his numbers in AAA, 1.21 earned run average in 141 innings. We know how much patience the Dodgers have. I mean, he's not even going to snip the major league roster unless it's an injury. And then due to budgetary constraints, we got to take on Dan Nelson Lamette. I always mispronounce his name. Making $5 million. We can always let him walk after this year or whatever, but he's having a good year in double A as well, so we're going to make this deal with the Dodgers. End up making the playoffs as a wild card team at 85 and 77. It must have been a really weak wild card. It looks like it was the Orioles, the Guardians, and us get in. Everybody else, the Yankees, Twins, and Astros are riding until the very end. Let's see, we have some league leaders. Josh Lowe led the league in stolen bases with 37. That's not something I expected. Then Hung Sung Kim and Josh Lowe win gold gloves. So Kim at least showed up with the glove. Let's see how everybody did since the first season. If we keep making the playoffs after this, I'll probably just... Show you guys the end of the year stats, possibly if we have enough time. I try to keep every video under an hour. Josh Lowe, 19 home runs, 6-3 RBIs. I'll take that. He had a gold glove type season. Had 37 th stolen bases. Ahmed Rosario was good. I mean, I can't really complain about the numbers. I think that's a very solid campaign for Ahmed Rosario. Yanni Diaz, not really what we expected coming off of last year, but still not a bad year. I mean, his numbers are down, especially the slugging, but not a horrible year. Isaac Peretti, a little bit of a down year, but still another good season. 24 home runs, 87 RBIs. Brandon Lau, 24 home runs, 64 or yeah, 64 ribbies. Pretty much on pace from last year. Richie Palacios gave us good numbers in limited product or limited a limited role. Eight home runs, 29 RBIs, 276 average. Hung Sung Kim didn't really hit. Hopefully he could get better next season with the bat. Jose Siri, down year from last year, unfortunately. And then Ben, who ended up getting hurt, is ended up back for the playoffs. This didn't hit much. Catching might be just need to be something we look at in the offseason for sure. Harold Ramirez, 296 off the bench. Always been good as a contact. You see his 96 contacts against right. Curtis Mead, not much off the bench. Oslevis Basabe gave us good production. Four for 12 and limited at-bats. And then Rene Pinto off the bench was not bad, actually, for a backup. And we look at the pitching, Shane McClanahan, just not a good year. Not not like a just, oh, my gosh, he was horrible type of year, but just not where we wanted the numbers to be, especially as our ace. Drew Rasmussen had a horrible, not, I keep saying horrible. It wasn't a horrible year. It's just horrible compared to the years before, I should say. So apologies for saying, because a 4.44 ERA isn't, like, 
completely bad, but it's definitely not where you want to see your number two pitching. Zach Eflin was great. Aaron Savali, 3.04 ERA. I will take that. And then Ryan Pepia for a fifth starter, I'll take a 4.19 ERA, even though it was a down year from last year. But I think he pitched out of the pen probably last year. Tony Goslin, not what we expected, especially after his year in AAA. Still gave us good innings at a long relief pitcher. Kevin Kelly was excellent, 2.40 ERA. Colin Pache, 3.83, a little bit down from last year, but a solid campaign out of the pen. Ori Lopez was worth the trade, 3.15 ERA. Austin Adams, 3.29 ERA, what a trade acquisition he was. Jason Adam, ERA a little higher than what we expected, but still had 32 holds. Taj Bradley ended up getting the call up, didn't pitch. We'll put him in a long relief role. And then we got Peter Fair, or I keep calling him Peter, Pete Fairbanks, 44 saves, only blew four opportunities and 2.24 years. So what a year he had in that closer spot. So it looks like we're facing the Tigers in the first round. So let's get to it. So here we go. Game one against the Detroit Tigers on the road. Let's see if we can advance past the wild card round. Shane McClanahan on the mound against Tariq Skubal. Here we go. One, two, three inning for Scooble. Let's see if we can get some offense here. No, we do not. McClanahan gives up a two-run bomb to Matt Beerling. Back-to-back home runs by him and Torkelson. And it's 3 nothing Tigers. we got to get our offense going here. Base is loaded. We score one, thanks to Kim. And Tigers do not score that inning. Solo shot by Torkelson, the second home run of the day. Another run scores and a double play. So not the best outing. Maybe one more inning out of McClanahan. So he gives us five not very good innings. Let's see if we can get our offense going and get back in this game. So we're going to put in Todd Bradley, see if he can give us a few innings here, save our bullpen for the rest of the series. There's a double for Gio Urshela. Scores a run thanks to Mark Hanna. And, man, Scuba has been excellent. Let's see. Let's bring in Kevin Kelly here. Gives up a single stolen base runner. Gets thrown off the top of the nine. Solo shot by Kim, who's having a good game so far. But that's all we get. So Kim is our entire offense in game one. Now what you want to see. So we're in a do-or-die game already. If we lose this, we're out of here. So Drew Rasmussen on the mound against Jack Flaherty. Let's see if we can get a run home. We do not. Our offense has not been great so far. It's Like I said, just been Kim and that's it. Base is loaded. They score one, score two. So three nothing. There's a double for our catcher. We get a runner thrown out and do not score at all. We're getting some hits off Jack Flaherty, but it isn't leading to nothing so far. We are being shut down. Another run scores. So time to go to the bullpen again. Tony Gosselin might have to give us a few innings in this do or die game. Solo shot by Zach McKinstry and it's 5 nothing Tigers. This is not a good start to the playoffs for us. Double, another run scores. Another run scores seven nothing Ray or Tigers. I wish it was seven nothing Rays. Two run bomb by Isaac Paredes gets us on the board. Let's see who do we bring in here. We're gonna bring in Colin Fache against a few lefties. So top of the ninth, not looking good for our season. Andrew Chafin in the pitch gives up a double, but that's always gonna give up. And we are shut down. We had ten hits, but couldn't get anybody home. Our offense lets us down. Four runs in two games. It's just not good. Let's see who wins the World Series before we get on to the second season. Phillies defeat the Red Sox to win a World Series. So we ended up really surprising a lot of the, you know, probably y'all because I thought we weren't even going to make the playoffs the way we were looking at the trade deadline. But we end up sneaking in, couldn't get past the Tigers. Looks like offense is going to be our probably mission to get in the offseason. So I'll go ahead and get to work. You can see we ended up making one move. And we traded away some starting pitching depth. We ended up trading Zach Littell, who was a year away from free agency. So we ended up giving Tony Gosselin a shot in the rotation. Ryan Pepiot, Zach Eflin, Drew Rasmussen, and Shane McClanahan. So the thing that's tough is Zach Eflin's due for free agency. I don't know if we'll be able to bring him back. If we're not in contention. We'll probably look to trade him. Bullpen, pretty much the same. We'll end up giving probably Neil Ramsey an opportunity. And then Peter Fairbanks will be our close. And we also got Luis Jarez, a young lefty out of the bullpen. We could give an opportunity to as well. We end up trading for Francisco Alvarez. We needed some offense. We end up getting him in a trade. And then Pinto will be the back. We end up trading Ben in that deal. Yanni Diaz at first. Brandon Lau at second. 
Isaac Brady is a third. Shortstop, we got Taylor Walls and Kim. And then Matt McLean, Jose Siri, and Josh Lowe will be the outfield. Still might sign a free agent to play off the bench. Our bench is looking pretty weak, so I'll probably do that before we start the next season. But overall, this team is looking very good. I mean, I think the offense will be a lot better, especially with Alvarez. It will help out a lot on defense and add a little bit more pop offensively compared to what Ben and the other catches were given. So I'm going to go ahead and look at free agency and then get the second season underway. I'm going to trade Jose Siri, who's having a really bad start to the year, for Stone Garrett, who's same age, higher potential, and having a better campaign. We are at the trade deadline and thinking of Ray's logic with this. Zach Eflin's about to hit free agency. Not having the best year compared to last year. So why not trade him, get a little bit younger, and get Ryan Weathers from the Marlins, who's having a pretty solid year. Got him till 2029, won't even be doing this franchise by that time, so we're good there. And he's only 25, so I mean, I try to make it a little bit more fair and throw in Adrian Santana, a 19-year-old second base project, because Weathers is probably going to be very good. So we're going to go ahead and make this deal. And we're sitting three games up on the O's. 65 and 45, so having a really good season. You guys just saw the trade we made for Ryan Weathers. Just going to quickly look through and see how everybody's doing. Just to see if there's anything when he upgraded here. Hong Song Kim's having a very good season. Great to see there. Harold Ramirez hitting third is not something I expected, even though he has good average. Not this year. Yanni Diaz has hurt for a week, so that's probably why. Isaac Paredes is still struggling. Matt McLean's hitting for a little bit more power. Francisco Alvarez. 14 homers, I'll take it. Richie Palacios with 21 home runs. That is a pleasant surprise, especially for a guy with low power stats. Good season for him. Stone Garrett's been great. Trade acquisition we got from the Nats. Taylor Wall's not really been doing too much. I think we had an injury, too. I'll have to go look. And then Blaze Alexander has not hit four for 47. Wow. Especially for contact against lefties. I'm very surprised about that. Aranda has not been great either. Pinto for a backup catcher. I mean, I always say you can't really expect backup catcher to hit too much. But, man, our bench looks like complete garbage. McClanahan has bounced back tremendously. Pepe at not having a great season. We got to add Weathers to the starting rotation. There we go. Tony Goslin's having an okay year. And then Drew Rasmussen just hasn't been great the last two seasons compared to two seasons ago. Let's take a look at the bullpen. Luis Jarez gave us he's given us innings but not been spectacular. Kevin Kelly, about where he was last season. Ori Lopez has been great. Colin Pache, who we've got a ton of trade interest in Colin Pache. Don't see why we trade him, though. Even though he's a dude for free agency, he's been too good. Neil Ramsey's been great. Pete Fairbanks, we ended up moving him out of the closer role because he was really struggling. Looks like he's selling a little bit more in that you know middle relief role. And Austin Adams, who's also due for free agency, 1.59 earned run average. And we moved Jason Adams to the closer spot, and he's 12 out of 15 in save opportunities. So that's a good move. So I look at this team, and you know, I could add to the lineup, but if we you know. I don't know where we really add at. I mean, Palacios is our weakest link right now, and he's hitting, or I shouldn't say weakest link, weakest over, lowest overall besides Taylor Walls. But I think we have Josh Lowe injured, if I'm not mistaken. He was having a good campaign. Actually, I think he's back now. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Yeah, he's back. I'm tripping right now. We had an injury, though. Yeah, Brandon Lowe. That's who it was. I apologize. Yeah, the other Lowe. We're not having a great year, but we're missing him in second base. Once we get him back, I think we'll be a lot better offensively. And then pitching, you know, we're looking pretty solid. I mean, a little bit of high ERAs in the bull in the uh, starting rotation, but not really like bad, bad. But I don't know. I think I'm gonna let this team go as it is. We're playing well right now. You know, we could add another starter, but there ain't really anybody on the trade block that's really better than what we got. Unless we, and we already trade a lot of prospects, so I really just want to see where this team sets at the end of the year and maybe work in the offseason and free agency. So I'll see you guys at the end of the second season. He's no, we end up having a fantastic year. 97 wins, 65 losses for the Tampa Bay Rays. Shane McClanahan led the league in strikeouts. 
Tony Gosselin in winning percentage, and Shane McClanahan in awards. So let's see what everybody did before we get the second postseason underway. Josh Lowe, 23 home runs, 79 RBIs, about where he's been the last two years. Great to see those numbers again. Kim bounced back tremendously. He's been working out as a trade acquisition so far. A lot of the trade acquisitions we've got have low-key been playing pretty well, so that's been good to see. 21 home runs for Kim, and 77 RBIs at 279. Yanni Diaz, we might need to look to move. He's going to get up there in age, making $8 million. First base might be something we look at. Isaac Paredes just hasn't hit. I don't know what the deal's been with him. I mean, he didn't have a bad year last year, but this year just not good. 195 average. Matt McClain, another guy we got in a trade. Great year, 22 home runs, 65 RBIs. Francisco Alvarez, hit us 19 home runs, 77 RBIs. I'll take that. Richie Palacios had a breakout season, 25 home runs and 83 RBIs. Great season for Richie. Stone Garrett was worth the trade as well, 19 home runs, 84 RBIs. So we really had a lot of power in this lineup. And then Brandon Lowe only played 98 games and still gave us 70 or 70, 17 home runs. So you look through the lineup, everybody had 10 plus home runs. So a lot of power. The bench, Miranda, or Miranda, Aranda didn't hit. Taylor Wall didn't really do too much. Basabe and Pintos. So that is not what you want to see off the bench. Shane McClanahan was fantastic. 15-9, 2.44 in run average. Ryan Weathers, ERA went up a little bit. Hopefully he pitches good in the postseason. Drew Rasmussen bounced back a little bit compared to last year. Ryan Pepiot. Not bad for a four starter, 4.45 ERA. And then Tony Goslin had a great second half, 14 and 6 record as well. Jarez, you know, for a long relief pitcher, I'll take those numbers. Kevin Kelly had a little bit of a down year, but still a solid year overall. Ori Lopez was great. He's been a great acquisition as well. Colin Pache was lights out, 57 innings, 1.26 earned run average. Neil Ramsey in his first full season was awesome. Peter Fairbanks had a down year. The second half is he already went up almost like one, I think. Austin Adam, another guy we got in the trade, has worked out smoothly, 2.8. All right, we're going to try to see if we can re-sign him. He's going to want a lot of money, especially with the campaigns he's been having. And then Jason Adam, we moved in the closer role, ended up, saving 30 sa- ended up saving 30 games, only blew three saves. So that is good to see. So I'm going to go ahead and get this playoffs underway. Hopefully this ends better than last year. We got swept by the Tigers in the wild card round. Yeah against the Orioles in the playoffs. This is going to be a hell of a series between two division rivals. Let's see if we can get the Dean Creamer and get some runs on the board here. Nothing so far. There's a run scored for the Orioles and a two-run bomb by Gunnar Henderson. And it's Dean Kramer. I apologize. I called him Kramer. I was just reading out a look. Dean Kramer. Let's see if we can get some runs as a leadoff double by low. So we can't get him in. Hopefully our offense don't let us down again. There's a solo shot by Jackson Holiday, and it's 4 nothing Orioles here in game one. Dean Kramer, really been good. Maybe one more inning out of Shane. So he gives us four okay innings. Dean is shutting us down. So let's go to the bullpen here. Let's bring in Colin Poche, one of our best pitchers during the regular season. Solo shot by Isaac Paredes gets us on the board, but nothing else. We're going to bring in Jorge Lopez here. Gives up a double. Another run scores. And it's 5-1. to one. Let's see if we can get something going here in the bottom of the eighth. Runner gets thrown out. Air ground out. And we're going to bring in Peter Fairbanks. I always call him Peter Pete Fairbanks. And he gets to the ninth. So bottom of the ninth. Craig Kimbrough in the pitch. And he shuts us down. So uh, our offense continues to struggle in the playoffs last two seasons. I know it's only one game, but that is not good to see. Let's see if game two is a different result here at home. We're going to give Ryan Ruthers the start here. Hopefully he comes through and gives us some good innings here against the Orioles. Those are early run, thanks to Adley. Getting up a little bit of hits with only one run. Kyle Bradish, one of their best starters. There's a solo shot by Colton Cowser and his 2 nothing Orioles. There's a double, walk, fly out, run scores thanks to Yanni Diaz, and Isaac Paredes ties up the game, so we end up getting some offense in this one. Strikeout, line out, pop up. Let's see if Ryan Weathers can give us five innings. He does, so good job today in that start. Two singles, a walk, base a load, two outs, a run scores, and we get thrown out at home. So time to go to the bullpen. We're going to bring in Neil Ramsey here. 
has a good inning. Kyle Bright is still pitching. They go to Cole Irving here out of the bullpen. And we got the base loaded two outs for Kim. He comes through with the RBI two-out single and a double by Yandy Diaz. Makes it seven to two Orioles. They bring in Sino Perez. Three run bomb by Matt McLean. And it is now ten to two Rays. Wow. Eleven to two now. Kevin Kelly gonna give us a few innings, hopefully, here. Maybe he can shut this down. He does. So Kevin Kelly saves the bullpen and we dominate as our offense finally wakes up here in the playoffs. So now we go to a hitter's ballpark in Baltimore. We got Drew Rasmussen on the mound for game three against Grayson Rodriguez. Solo shot leads off the game for Josh and his one nothing Orioles. But Drew's in a little bit of a jam here. Gives up a run, but that's all they're going to get in the first inning. Hopefully he can settle in a little bit better here as he has a good second inning. Single, sack, bump, fly out, and a run scores thanks to Ryan O'Hearn. So it's 2-1 to one Orioles. Solo shot by Westberg makes it 3-1 to one Orioles. Trying to get five innings. We do. Let's see if we can get this game tied up and get some runs. We're going to bring in... Colin Poche to face some lefty single, single, ground out, walk, gives up a run. So time to bring in Jarez, and he gets out of it. So four to one. Maybe one more inning out of Jarez. Error, strikeout, strikeout, ground out. Top of the eighth. Rodriguez is still just mowing us down right now. This is not looking good. We're going to bring in Austin Adams here. One, two, three. Top of the ninth. Four to one. Felix Batista in the pitch. Ground out, walk. Pop up, two run bomb by Richie Palacios, but it is not enough to get us back in the game as we lose a one run game and we trail two to one in the series now. Do or die game in Baltimore. Do we put Ryan Pepiot or Tony Goslin on the mound? This is a tough. Goslin had a better season. He's got more postseason experience. Let's see if he can get us to win here. Tyler Wells on the mound for the Orioles. Three run bomb by Matt McLean early on gets us the lead. Going to send some half innings here, save a little bit of time, but the Orioles get a run back. Still three to one lead all double by Jackson Holiday. Jordan Westberg drives them in. Let's see if we can get some runs to try to help out Gosselin here. He gets out of a jam. Tyler Wells gets out of a jam as well. So we have an injury, looks like, as Luis Jarez comes in the pitch. That is not good. Jacob Webb in the pitch for the Orioles. Bases loaded, nobody out. Sack fly by Stone Garrett. Three run bomb by Josh Lau. And it is 7-2 here in game four. Let's see if Jarez has another good He does. Core Irving still in the pitch. We're going to bring in, let's see, Neil Ramsey here to face Phil Luffy. Solo shot by Jackson Holiday. 7-3. So let's see, we're going to bring in Peter Fairbanks, one, two, three, eighth, top of the ninth. Bases loaded, one out, and a double play. So we're going to bring in Jason Adams just to close the door. If he can, he does. So Tony Costin, ab ab abdominal strain, so he'll be out a few days. So I don't know if that'll really hurt us in this series. I don't even think he's going to pitch again at all in this last game. So that's, hopefully he's going to go if we advance. So game five in Tampa Bay. we got to put Shane on the mound here. Let's see if he can get us to the next round. Orioles strike early thanks to Adley. So our offense going to have to come through in this one against Kyle Bradish. Let's see if we can do it here. Shane's been good besides that first thing. There's an error, a fly out, a strikeout, and a pop-up. So our offense hitless through four innings, two errors on the Orioles, but it hasn't come back to haunt them yet. And the Orioles strike again in the fifth inning. Still no hit through five innings. Six strong innings for McClanahan, but we have no hits. So seven strong innings. Kyle Bradish throwing a no-hitter right now against us. So let's bring in Colin Pache. There's an error, and it comes back to bite us badly, and it gives up a run. Kyle Bradish throwing a no-hitter. Ground out, ground out, ground out. We really might be getting no hit. And the do or die game. That is insane. So we're going to bring in Austin Adams here. Gets a little bit of a jam.
Kyle Bradish, can he throw a no-hitter against a strikeout in a single in the ninth by Kim breaks up the no-hitter? But that's all we're going to get as we are eliminated and completely shut down by Kyle Bradish. And we are eliminated. Let's see who wins the World Series. The Braves defeat the Orioles to win the World Series. We came so close to advancing. But Kyle Bradish just shut us the F down. It was a complete shutdown. So congratulations to the Orioles. Back-to-back years, we make the playoffs. I've had very good success in the AL East so far. Every team has made the playoffs. Going to go ahead and get all my free agency in the offseason for the final and third season of this franchise. We did sign one starter, Trevor Williams, just to be a long relief pitcher, maybe like a spot starter here and there. Figured that would help out. And in bullpen, we ended up drafting George Rivera. I usually let the computer you know, draft the teams just because we're doing three seasons, and then usually they don't really make an impact. But George Rivera is going to make an impact. A potential, 80 overall, 22 years old. So he'll be a part of our bullpen. Really the only big addition we made really is him. Catcher, we got Alvarez, first base, Yanni Diaz. We didn't end up really going after a first baseman. Xavier Isaacs definitely should get an opportunity. We have a lot of shortstops as well. And then Curtis Mead, also another guy who could get an opportunity. We'll see either him or Isaac. Second base, we got low. Third base, Paredes. Shortstop, Kim. Left field, McLean and Richie Palacios. And then we got Stone Garrett and Josh Lowe. So hopefully this team can make a run at the World Series. I feel like it's a very good roster. Like I said, the AL East has been very successful for me so far. So hopefully this is the team we can win a World Series. But we got one more season to do it. Let's do it. Line and we're not really having a great season, but we're still tied for first with the Red Sox. So something must be going right or this division just sucks. I think it's the latter. The Blue Jays are four games under 500. Yankees are 51 and 59. Yeah, 51 and 59. The Orioles are 44 and 66. Not really what I expected to see. So let's see why, you know, we're not really playing too well. Kim's not hitting well at all. That's not helping. Yandy Diaz is not really hitting. Josh Lowe's having a great season. 20 home runs at the All Star at the trade deadline. Francisco Alvarez is going to have a career year this year. Stone Garrett's going to probably have a career as well. Isaac Paredes has bounced back. Going to have another career, or another. Going to have a career year as him. There's a lot of guys in the lineup probably going to have career years. Brandon Lyle's been good. Matt McClain had an injury, but when he's been healthy, he's been good for the most part. And then Taylor Wells has not really done too much. Aranda's provided decent production. Xavier Isaac hasn't hit much at the major league level. And then Johnny Le- DeLuca hasn't hit, and then Rene Pinto has been dreadful. So Alonso's been hit or miss. Let's take a look at the pitching. Shane McClanahan's having a down year. Had a good year last year, had a down year a little bit before. Been up and down. Drew Rasmussen, not a bad year at all. 3.55 run run average. Ryan Weathers, solid year. About where his ERA's been the last two years. And then Ryan Pepiot's having a down year, ERA close to five. And then Tony Gosselin's been... Solid as a fifth starter, but not really fantastic. Trevor Williams has not been good. One of our few pickups that hasn't worked out. George Rivera in his first major league season, not bad. I mean, 4.24 year. Colin Pache, thank goodness we re-signed him because he's been fantastic. Neil Ramsey's having a down year. Pete Fairbanks has bounced back, 2.91 ERA. Jason Adams has been bad, 4.59 ERA. So it looks like we need somebody in that setup role. So maybe Neil Reigns, we can get better in that role. And then we called up Luis Jarez, who had a solid year last year, but really hasn't been good. And Austin Adams, we put in a closer role, and he's been really good, 1.76 ERA. So our team looks like it's got a lot of guys who are either underperforming or well, it looks like it's a combination of guys overperforming and then uh, the guys who are underperforming are hurting the guys who are overperforming. And trust me, I want Tyreek Skubal on this team. I do. But they want a lot. I mean, they want Matt McClain and Francisco Alvarez. Can't give that up. I mean, we can't. Could we trade McClain a hand for Tyreek Skubal? Yes, but I'd rather have them both in rotation. We could throw in like a Drew Rasmussen or a Ryan Weathers like I tried to give them Xavier Isaac and Carson Williams. They would not go for it. We'd have to give up one of our best players to probably get him, which it makes sense. I mean, this guy's one of the best starters in the league. So, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. But I ain't giving up our starting catcher for him at all. 
So, I mean, I don't, I don't really think we have the prospect capital to get him. We could go out and get a David Fry, who's been really good for the Guardians. You know, we could put him at first base, maybe throw in a Yandy Diaz and Carson Williams for him. I think we're going to do that trade. So we get David Fry. We'll see if that shrinks his overall, putting him at third from first. It's weird how that happens sometimes. Let's see if it drops it a lot. So 89 overall. So we added a big bat to our lineup with a lineup of guys who are playing pretty well for the most part. So if we look at pitching, like we could use another starter. I, th I think we really could. We have three guys with ERAs of four. And then Shane McLennan and Rasmussen haven't been, like, the greatest. But it's like, who do we go out and get? I'm going to look through the roster real quick, and I'll let you guys know if we find anybody we really want as a starter. To really, really upgrade this rotation, we would have to trade, like, really every good player we got because we made so many trades. So I'm just going to ride this team out. We're going to see how we finish the season, and hopefully we can make a run. Playoffs as a wild card team. So we make the playoffs, well, Technically, get into the wild court or the playoffs all three seasons. We end up finishing 86 76, two games back of the Red Sox. Let's see what everybody did before we get the season underway. Kim, down year, just not a good year for Kim offensively. David Fry, numbers a little down. He still drove in 88, but power definitely went down. Josh Lowe had a solid campaign. Francisco Alvarez with 34 home runs. Great to see that. Isaac Paredes, looks like we have an empty spot. We have center field empty. We're going to put Palacios in there and move him down a little bit in the lineup. And get that figured out real quick. So Isaac Paredes, 27 home runs. Provide a little bit of pop again. Brandon Lau, not a bad year. I don't know why his overall really dropped. I mean, his numbers are a little down. Actually, not even down from last year. Taylor Walls gave us okay production at the DH. Richie Palacios was hurt a lot of the year. Still gave us a little bit of pop. And then Matt McLean had a down year as well. So a little bit of down years across the board. Johnny LaDuca didn't really give us much offensively, neither did Xavier Isaac. Basabe didn't do much, so our bench was very, very weak, that's for sure. Shane McClanahan, down year overall, not bad, just down. Drew Rasmussen, about where he was last year, so pretty identical numbers. Ryan Weathers had a really identical ERA to last year, that's crazy. Ryan Pepe bounced back in the second half, good to see. And then Trevor Williams, who they moved from the bullpen, had a 4.83 RA, and then Tony Gosselin, we're moving back to rotation, had a three point, had another guy, identical ERA. George Rivera, first major league season was a success, 6-1 record, 3.89 ERA. Colin Pache was awesome again. Peter, or Pete Fairbanks, 2.92 ERA. Luis Jarez had an excellent year. Jason Adams, a down year overall across the board. Kevin Kelly was lights out, 1.39 ERA. Austin Adams had 29 saves, only blew three saves. So what a year for him. So overall, great season for the pitching, especially the bullpen. So we're facing the Red Sox in the wild card game. So let's see if we can get at least past the first round or wild card this season. Garrett Whitlock on the mound. Let's see if we can get some offense going. Got a single, a walk, a fly out, a walk. We can't get anybody home, though. Here at Fenway Park. Error doesn't hurt us there. Runner gets thrown out. So two singles, a fly out, and a run scores thanks to Raphael Devers. So there's a walk, strikeout, strikeout. So our offense, once again, not coming through. We needed to. McClanahan's been good for the most part. As soon as I say that, he gives up two runs. So it's time to take him out. He's getting a little tired. Let's bring in Trevor Williams. Two runs score. Error, sack, bunt. Another two runs score off of Trevor Williams. And we bring in Ferry. This game's been made wide open right now. It is not looking good. Sack fly and a fly out. Eight nothing. We're gonna bring in Jorez here. Hit by pitch. Another run scores. Nine nothing. We end up scoring a run in the top of the eight. Jason Adams in the pitch. So top of nine. Spencer Turnbull in the pitch, and he gets the final out here as we get smoked in game one, nine to one. Man, not how you want to start your wild card run here. But maybe game two will be a different story. Drew Rasmussen on the mound. Here we go. Tanner Huck on the mound. We score an early run thanks to David Fry. But we get a double play to end the inning. A little bit of a jam, but we get out of it. Two singles, a walk, strikeout, run scores thanks to David Fry. So it's 2 nothing. Red Sox bases loaded 
and they can't get anybody home. Can't have that happen. Solo shot by Brandon Lowe, and it's 3 nothing. Base is low. We get a double playing a fly out. So Red Sox looking like us, having trouble scoring runs as Rasmussen has shut them down for the most part in this game from scoring runs. Three runs scored thanks to Matt McLean. Another run scores, 7 nothing, 9 nothing, and now it's 10 nothing. There's a solo shot by Rafael Devers. Gets the Red Sox on the board. Rasmussen was spectacular in this game. Maybe one more inning. Okay, two walks. So it's time to go to the bullpen. We're going to bring in Kevin Kelly, and he shuts him down. So we're going to bring in Colin Poche here. A little bit of a jam. He gets a double play. So let's bring in Rivera here. Gives up a solo shot to Abreu, but that's all he gives up. So we get a 10-2 win. So we're going into a do-or-die game at Fenway Park. Should be a very interesting game. We're going to give Ryan Weathers the nod here against Brian Bello. Let's see if we can get some early runs. We don't. There's a double by Austin Hayes and a two-run bomb by Devers. Makes it 2 nothing early. We can't get any runs that inning. Man, I hope our offense comes through because it is. And there's another run by the Red Sox. Two-run score. We got to take out Weathers early. I don't know if our offense is capable of getting back in this game the way we played the last few seasons, but we're about to find out. Single, pop-up, pop-up. It is not looking good. Single, line-out, fielder's choice, single, walk, one run scores, and that's all we get. And the Red Sox trying to make something happen. They don't. Brian Bellow has shut us down. Bases loaded two outs for Matt McClain against Drew Smith, and he pops up. That is tough. And again, our offense is just being completely shut down here. We're going to give Austin Adams at least an inning here to get some pitching. So top of the ninth, our season on the line. Drew Smith, Michael Fulmer now to face David Fry, fly out. Josh Lowe, fly out. And Francisco Alvarez grounds out. So we get eliminated in the wild card two out of three seasons. And we are officially eliminated. Let's see who wins this World Series here. The Dodgers defeat the Rangers. So, Rays fans, I feel like I let y'all down. I tried to make logical moves that made sense for the Rays. Tried to make some trades. Didn't really do a lot in free agency. Maybe I should have. I had a little bit of money to spend. But I feel like for the most part, this was a good team. And we had some good players. We made some good trades that really helped us get some younger players to develop. And we made some runs. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this franchise. We got the Blue Jays next, final team in the AL East, and we got 10 more teams to go. So make sure to like and subscribe. Peace.